Uh, this one's from Anonymous. Get a lot of questions from Anonymous. Uh, just set up my guy first that tenant. Anonymous guy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just set up my first tenant so I can get to grips with Office 365. Looking for recommendations for things that are a must for any new tenant. Thank you in advance. So what's a must for a new tenant? <laughs> How how long do we want to be here for? <laughs> I know that's a pretty broad <laughs> question. Very broad. Yeah, I'd say yeah. good architecture. You've got to plan the architecture. You don't just go out there and let people create whatever they want. Okay. It's got okay. to be planned out. But isn't this like the ultimate "it depends" question? That's it. Um, yes. you have how big to know is how big? About, yeah. Well, I was like, well, what what does that mean? Is it just Office three sixty five? Are you creating an intranet with SharePoint? Are you using Teams? Or is it just, is it email? Is it is, is it exchange? Uh, what's the, the, the SKU? Is it exchange only? Is it exchange with office only? So like, what is that business premium or whatever that one is? Yeah. I'm sorry, Five I'm not an people, expert in the name. 125,000 people. Like right, <laughs> I mean, there's so yeah. many different things that will, that, you know, I, I think there are, I mean, the, the, there are, are articles, there are books written on this. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, one thing I would say uh, is to go and build a deployment plan. I would start with going to adoption.microsoft.com and get some ideas of what that looks like. And again, you have to answer the question, like what components are you rolling out? Um, I, I, I'm not, while I'm... I'm not an advocate for turning everything on unless the organization is familiar with all of those things that are being turned on. Um, so you might do a gradual rollout. But don't um, turn it all off because you don't know what they are too. So yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. But it, it goes back to that it depends. Uh, uh, what, are your try, what are you trying to do? Um, yeah. I mean, That's if you're if you're able to go and deploy it out to, let's say it is just it's email, Teams, and the Office Suite first, and make that available. There are people that might be familiar with them through prior companies, uh, and so they're very comfortable there. But go and pilot it out with the organization, and there are plenty of training materials that are out there. There are deployment plans that you can go and use and swap out, put your company logo in there and modify, customize for your organization that'll help you through that process. Um, yeah, bring in some bring in some champs and you know have they actually collaborate and work together. So they've got to be part of a part of a team, not just an individual standalone either, because an individual standalone does not collaborate you know, with another. So choose a particular team or champs that will actually work together so that you can test it. And, you know, things like you've got so many questions that you said, you know, Shari, it's architecture, it's security. Are you dealing with external parties? You know, what does it look like? How secure does your organisation need to be? I mean, when you're working with them, it can be anywhere. As you said, from five people, doesn't matter. 125,000 and you're, you know, a security type organization, like everything's really locked down. You're going to have to start learning pretty hard and fast what you have yep. on and off. <laughs> and I think any... what's underlying everything y'all are saying is that <clears throat> what business challenge are you trying to solve? Mm. Like you can't just create stuff to create stuff. It's like, you know, look and talk to your people, find out what's painful in their job and start building from that using user stories. And that's part of the adoption, change management workshop, adoption. Start from your workshop. There's some Getting really great involved. content, um, you know, that's actually available online that you can workshop you through even like, you know, fast track or on adoption, start workshopping and start looking and asking all of the questions. There's a lot of really great relevant questions that are there that you can work your way through slowly but surely and um, have a look at the personas in your business. What do they do? What do they need? So if you understand some of the personas, you can then start to look at, um, you know, off the back of that, it starts around the architecture or the security. It's like these guys, they're out in the field and they're frontline and they do this and they need this information. And the so if you look look at the people and I mean you do it it's a little generic you don't want to actually go deep dive into every type of role but you start from you know what are the personas what do they do how do they access the information 
who are they dealing with and break it out and then you can start to look you know and go from there you know when we're doing and i start right from the very beginning of some of the workshop they're the kind of things that we get into then we look at the scenarios and the scenarios around okay here's the type of people what are the scenarios they need to be able to share with an external party. How locked down does it need to be? Um, yep. This is document sharing and the different scenarios. And you start to build from there, you know, bring it right back. Because I see them go straight to the flick this on, flick this off, but they don't know why and whether it's actually needed because they've not actually worked with the business to build out what it looks like for an individual or a team to work in this environment. A great example. So in past life, I built PMOs, so project management organizations for different companies. And of course, this goes back pre uh, SharePoint, pre Teams, of course. Um, but I, you know, we did a lot of the piloting for organizations that I worked in. So we were constantly testing yeah. out new technologies and then deploying those. I would look at something like email. I think, again, there are standards that are best practices for that. I'm not an expert on all things on you know, deploying brand new exchange. Let's say they're moving from another non-Microsoft email platform and there needs to be training and everything around that. But around teams, talking about the collaboration side um, for the project management, again, we might we might define upfront everything you're talking about, all the, the governance, security, compliance rules that need to be in place for that. The naming conventions, the sensitivity labels oh. around the, the, the rules around internal external sharing and the permission structures again there's a lot just with my team of let's say five direct reports that we're piloting this out we still have to go through all of those things and there again there's content out there there's helps that are out there adoption.microsoft.com is a great place to go and start for a lot of that that kind of guidance um but we might we might say that my my team, so I've run a lot of these teams, might be project centric uh, teams that are created, initiative or program centric, and then uh, like internal uh, uh, you know organizational related uh, uh, things. I might then go create templates for each of those kinds of teams and set up a, an approval process, part of the governance of this or, or is we just going to have it wide open and anybody can create a team or are we going to have some kind of an approval process and things around that to make sure that, uh, you know, the, the, the categorizing and the, you know, cataloging of our data, it's done in a way that we can then go and optimize the search experience once things are, you know, built out, um, kind of all of those things, it all comes back to, again, what is the goal of the organization? Um, what are we trying to do? I, like with a lot of a lot of orgs that are Microsoft centric, they've got some aspects. They've got email. They've got other things out there. Maybe they're already using Teams. Um, it's never too late to go in there and clean all this up if you never went through and had those kinds of conversations. And sprawl is starting to happen. And now maybe what this person this is why they're anonymous because they know they're open. They just opened a can of worms. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they Look, don't want Christian, their name on that. I've had yeah. a lot of really small businesses, like just one man bands, or they've got two or three people come to me and go, and I'm sure you, you know, might have had friends in that going, oh, I just want to use this. How do I kind of get in and get started? And it's like, you know, friendly, just use your email. Make sure you've got your documents into your OneDrive from a personal. Use your SharePoint for your business documents. Make sure you make it externally enabled, at least so that you can collaborate with external parties. Just start from there using Microsoft Teams so that you can do your meetings. You know, you don't necessarily need to get into Teams and channels just yet to do. Um, turn on feder you know, your federation and making sure that you've got your federation there to be able to deal with an external party and chat with them if they're federated with you. You know, just some really simple little basics if you want to go how do i get myself started and it's a little one-man band it's like well let's just start with the very basics you know we're thinking in the big orgs but i have so yeah. many to the and an anonymous could literally just be i've just got my own tenant and i don't know how to do it i've got a business what should i do you know i'll, uh, I'll tell no, you one you, thing you no matter what your notification yeah. yeah you get that little notification something went wrong ask your administrator i'm like um i i am the administrator oh, yeah, i am <laughs> I get that too, and I go, oh, what? A, look look in the mirror. <laughs> so, Administrator, so. you are good enough. You are smart enough. <laughs> the people like you. 
Um, I, one other thing I would say as, uh, and, and uh, you know, again, this is this huge, uh, it depends conversation, mm -hmm. um, but is no matter what size your organization is, turn on a multi-factor authentication. Uh -huh. Oh, Do yes. That day yes. One. Here, here. Yes. There, there's yeah. a problem. There's an issue that hits organizations large and small. And with mm -hmm. the increase in, you know, just the, the cybersecurity issues, um, getting, you know, spam and phishing are a constant. It's a daily thing uh, with my personal tenant. It's just me on it. And yes. I have those issues. Yep, me too. So. One, one of the first things that I think of, because they're, they're really talking about, hey, I just set up my first tenant. What what do I do? I, I My recommendation there is to actually go through the admin center, right? Go through uh, the admin at Microsoft.com, go through the portal of, of, of Azure, walk through each of them, and each page has a guide on learning what to do. Um, that's one thing, and I think that's just getting yourself familiar and comfortable. Um, but certainly, I, I think uh, you're spot on, Christian. Uh, create a user account, make that a global reader account, and then get out of there. Get out of there with your global admin account. Go in with your user account. Now go and explore and do that exploration. And, and you know, I love what everybody is saying around, uh, have a program team. Uh, to really help you develop what you're supposed to be or what the intention is for your tenant. Um, but until then, I think the first and foremost thing is what are you trying to accomplish? And that's the, it depends, uh, secure your tenant and just go explore. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cause you're, you're likely, uh, it, this is always fun too. I started my career 30 something. Blah, I'm old um, years ago um, <laughs> as a business analyst. Uh, and so that, you know, the it's there's always kind of the, the catch 22 of asking people their requirements. What do you want? What are the outcomes from that? And if they don't understand what's possible, then they will give you their requirements based on their lens of understanding, their limited yeah. view of what they think is possible. And so that experimentation, Michelle, like going and, and exploring that, you're going to find, I didn't know we could do that. Oh, wow, I can also do this. And they can get much more creative be about curious. solving some of those problems. Yes, be curious. curious. Yes. Curiosity is always my word of the day when I'm workshopping. Just go be curious in training. Go curious. Go click about it. You're not going to hurt things. <laughs> well, this is, <laughs> those this those is workshop of, discussions are my favorite to lead, 100%. Yes. I know Michelle, yeah. too. That, oh, like, yeah. let's, those are my favorite ones, so. I, I always liked, uh, so our, our mutual friend here, John White, uh, fellow MVP, and he used to always say like, like you, the IT should not be the department of no, you know, this yes. always telling people, no, you can't do things. It should be much more of a conversation and understanding of what are, what are you trying why? to accomplish? What are the out, what the, the, you know, why are you doing that? And then let's find the best way to do that. And if it can't be done safely and securely, then maybe it's no, but it should always start with a conversation. Yeah.